So, uh, hello, Salamat Sizbi, Zrasvati. On behalf of the British Kazakh Society, it's a pleasure to welcome you today to this webinar titled World Class Dispute Resolution Services in Central Asia. Uh, on housekeeping, uh, the webinar will be video recorded and available on the BKS web. A simultaneous uh, interpretation into Russian. There should be a language choice button at the base of your screen. So please select your appropriate language. Today, we are delighted to have the Chief Executive of the AIFC Court and the Astana International Arbitration Center, plus two of his colleagues. And also, we're extremely pleased to have Rashid Gassim back again as our moderator for today's session. So with that, just brief introduction, over to you, Rashid. Yeah, hi, hi everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be a moderator of today's uh, discussion. And we really hope to have it as a discussion today. And as David explained, we have three distinguished speakers today. And uh, I will just go through one by one, introducing all of them now. So first one is Mr. F Mr. Christopher Campbell Holt, Registrar and Chief Executive of the AIFC Court and International Arbitration Center. Uh, Chris, uh, Christopher is Registrar and Chief Executive, and he's also an Enforcement Judge of the AIFC Court. And he's responsible for the day-to-day -day management and administration of the Court and the uh, International Arbitration Center, and case management of both litigation and alternative dispute resolution, as delegated by the Chief Justice and Chairman. And Christopher was, from the very beginning, involved in the establishment of the AIFC Court and IAC. He is also a member of AIFC Legal Advisory Council, which reviews and approves AIFC law. And he is also a member of a working group on judicial and legal reforms uh, of the Supreme Council of Reforms of the Office of the President of the Republic of Kazakhstan. And Christopher is also a member of International Council of the Supreme Court of the Republic of Kazakhstan, which advises on reform of the Kazakh Court and dispute resolution. Christopher has uh, many years of experience uh, working in different jurisdictions, in, including UK, US, Middle East, and Central Asia. And uh, in, uh, prior to his position in Kazakhstan, he, uh, Christopher was a registrar at an international financial center, commercial court, and ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution Center, in Qatar, under the presidency of Lord Wolf, the former Lord Chief Justice of England and Wales. And Christopher also worked, before that, worked at Norton Rose Fulbright, international law firm. Uh, and uh, he also worked uh, in Middle East uh, with the international law firm Covington and Berlin in Doha, Qatar. So I think uh, we, 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 we probably stop here for now, uh, unless, David, you think it's appropriate for me to introduce two other speakers as well now. It's in your hands, uh, Rashi. Excellent. So if you don't mind, Alexander and Ilya, I don't want to hold you and not to sort of introduce you properly. So if, if it's okay, uh, I will start with Ilya. Uh, Dr. Ilya Rachkov, he's a member of I, uh, IAC panel of arbitrators and mediators. Uh, Ilya is a partner at the law firm Niktorov Savilev and Partners in Moscow, Russia. And he's also a professor of international economic law at the Moscow State Institute of International Relationships. And main focus of Ilya's practice is dispute resolution, arbitration, and international trade law. Uh, our third speaker is uh, Alexander, Alexander Karabenikov, uh, partner at Baker McKenzie, and he's also a member of IAC arbitrator panel. And um, Alexander is specializing in dispute resolution, energy and nature resources, and antitrust and competition issues. So I think we have uh, our brief introductions by now. So I guess now we can move towards uh, a few words from Chris, I guess, and, and then the film. 
and then we'll have questions and answers and proper discussion, hopefully. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Rashid. And I'd like to start by uh, warmly thanking the British Kazakh Society and in particular David Skills for his kindness in inviting us to uh, participate in this important webinar um, for not just for British Kazakh Society, but for us, also for us in Kazakhstan at the AFC Court and IEC and the wider AIFC. Um, I'd like to note thanks also from the AFC Court and IC to Steve Bourne, who currently works in the AFC and formerly was at City UK. It's because of him that we were kindly introduced to David Skills. So thanks to him for, for that. <coughs> and thanks, of course, to Rashid, our moderator, and to two of our excellent, um, most distinguished and most experienced um, uh, IAC arbitrator panel members, Dr. Ilya Rachkov and Mr. Alexander Korobyanikov, who both have been extremely supportive of every initiative that we've launched at the AFC Court and IAC for some years now. Very quickly, by way of background on the Court and IAC, for all of the participants who are not perhaps so aware or informed of, of what we do in Kazakhstan at the AFC Court and IAC, um, we really believe that our services are unique. Uh, unique for Central Asia, um, but unique in other ways as well. And, and the elements of that, the features of that, I hope will come out during the course of the questions and answers. But just very briefly, as by way of background, um, Lord Wolf and myself were uh, invited um, by the governor of the AFC, Dr. Karak Kalembatov, to come to Kazakhstan in early 2017. And we were given advisory uh, roles uh, to help advise on the establishment of the AIFC court and the IAC, and to some extent, uh, with other people, specifically Michael Blair QC, I hope you won't mind me mentioning him, the chairman of the AFC Legal Advisory Council, to assist with the creation and development of the so-called common law that applies in the AFC, the AFC acting law. Uh, Lord Wolfe subsequently became the Chief Justice, the first Chief Justice of the AFC courts with effect from the 1st of January 2018, uh, along with, I believe at the time, eight judges all of whom come from the English common law uh, background, a mixture of uh, very senior, uh, distinguished and internationally renowned and respected uh, judges, um, plus some senior barristers with judicial or international arbitration and other dispute resolution experience, not just in uh, England and Wales, but throughout the world. Um, Barbara Doman QC from Blackstone Chambers in London was appointed as the chairman of the IAC, the International Arbitration Centre, again with effect from the 1st of January 2018, and I became the Registrar and Chief Executive of both the Court and the IAC from the same time. Since then, um, I can tell you that as of today, both the Court and IAC combined have uh, successfully resolved to completion a total of 418 cases. This is well and truly above what we really expected to have achieved at this stage of our development, as we now are into the second quarter of just the fourth year of our operations. Those cases have consisted mostly, I think, of uh, contractual disputes, non-payment uh, elements in particular, finance matters, land property matters, some employment disputes, um, but chiefly uh, contractual disputes, particularly and increasingly finance and construction and engineering focused. Mediation has proven to be extremely popular so far at the IAC and we're satisfied, we're happy with that. It seems to be similar to some initiatives being rolled out in the local courts of Kazakhstan. I should set out that we are uh, completely 100% uh, independent at the court in IAC with impartiality and incorruptibility being absolutely critical to the services that we provide. Parties of, from uh, in the disputes, the 418 disputes so far have come from the United Kingdom. They've come from Kazakhstan, Russia, China, Turkey, Poland, Azerbaijan, a number of other countries and throughout uh, most of the regions. I think it's 11 or 12 regions now uh, throughout the whole territory of Kazakhstan. So we're really getting wide coverage and traction and interest and recognition uh, for our work. 259 lawyers have now registered at the AFC Court for Rights of Audience. I put that out there because we want to encourage more people, particularly from London, to sign up for Rights of Audience or apply for Rights of Audience at our court. The lawyers have come from 27 jurisdictions throughout the world, 25 countries, three jurisdictions from within the USA. And that covers lawyers from Latin America, I just said the USA, the United Kingdom, throughout Europe, Africa, Asia, Central Asia, Australia, New Zealand, really the whole world. So we're very pleased with that encouraging sign of recognition and interest 
uh, and user function for our facility. We are completely 100% online during COVID-19. We do have world-class physical premises in the Sultan, the capital city of Kazakhstan. We're very proud of those. We reckon that those, and believe that those right would rival the physical premises of any dispute resolution center anywhere around the world. And we have the latest digital technology. We apply e-justice, which is a case management system, which we launched in February, 2019, uh, with the support uh, and development support of a company based in Singapore. We also use video hearing technology for pre-trial and trial hearings at this stage. We've been included in more than 4,000 business contracts for dispute resolution uh, as the number one choice for commercial dispute resolution in this Central Asia region including with companies such as Chevron, Tengu Chevroil, uh, who have really set the benchmark, if you like, for other companies, particularly in the oil and gas sector in Kazakhstan and Central Asia region. In addition, very quickly, out of interest, the added value that we bring to Kazakhstan, Central Asia, and, and perhaps the world in some smaller and diluted form is training and development. We have now trained more than 2,000 uh, Kazakh national lawyers and business people on the common law. How does the common law work? Key principles of commercial law as it applies within the AFC legal regime. And also specifically, obviously for our purposes at the AFC Court and IC, dispute resolution skills, online and in-person advocacy skills, arbitration uh, counsel and arbitrator uh, skills, mediator skills with an accredited qualification from an, an, an institution based in London with international reach. So all in all, we believe we're making tremendous progress very quickly ahead of time. We're enormously ambitious, as always, uh, not just us at the AFC Court and the IEC, but the whole of the AFC. In fact, the whole of Kazakhstan, as I'm sure you, the members of the British Kazakh Society all know by now. And we're very excited about the future. And we hope that you will all be coming along with us on this journey as we continue to progress our plans in the coming years. Thank you. done with the film. I think we could all read and had uh, the uh, excellent opportunity to see the slides. And I think uh, some of them, they already kind of uh, reinforce the message which, which Chris 
uh, delivered five minutes ago about the number of cases, about the milestones. And uh, I guess my first question to Chris and to other speakers uh, would be on uh, how they view, and obviously for Chris, who is official within, within the court, but for from our two practitioners, would be interesting to see the vision of both AFC court and uh, uh, IAC sort of uh, vision and what the key objectives they think should be at this stage of development. Chris, if you don't mind, we'll start with you and then move to Alexander Edia. Thank you very much, Rashid. Um, very quickly, in answer to the question, um, as I said before in my introductory remarks, the AFC court and IAC share a common goal, and that is to be uh, recognised as the number one choice for commercial dispute resolution for the whole Central Asia region, not just for the AFC or Kazakhstan, but for the whole AFC, um, Central Asia region. We believe that we're making very important uh, footprints and impact already at this early stage of our development, and that we are long, a long way along the road of achieving that, um, despite the efforts of some other countries uh, with their initiatives as well. Indeed, we're seeking cooperation and partnership with those other countries, not to, not competition. Um, the, the end of the video highlighted some of the key objectives that we're focused on at a very, very high level. Of course, we have very detailed plans in place and we're implementing those uh, right now. But cases, of course, uh, we want to we're working on various initiatives to increase uh, quickly the number of cases coming both to the court and to arbitration. Uh, secondly, uh, we're rolling out new enforcement initiatives, and I'm sure we'll come on to enforcement a bit later in the details of that, but we're working on more international arrangements to make that as um, reliable as possible internationally. Um, further services roll out uh, every year. We make sure that we are uh, rolling out new services, and, and those will be launched in due course throughout the course of this year. And further international recognition for our, all of our efforts, because we want this AFC Court and IC and the AFC to be here for a very long time. We want it to be trusted, uh, to, for it to give confidence, um, it, for investment to come to Kazakhstan, so that if investors invest, they, they are persuaded, they believe, and it is actually true in practice that they have absolute protection if anything goes wrong during the course of their business relations. Thank you, thank you very much. Alexander, uh, Ilya, would you like to add probably anything at this stage or you agree with everything and we can move on to some other questions? Yeah, first of all, uh, uh, thank you for this opportunity uh, to, be, to be here, that's my pleasure. And uh, uh, I uh, always, uh, I, I always like to use the opportunity to share my uh, my, my own pleasure to be a part of, of uh, AFC initiative. And uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, AFC court and IFC arbitration, arbitration center have very great start. And uh, what was already achieved by these two institutions are remarkable. Uh, take into account that uh, uh, that uh, uh, official start uh, was only less than three, a bit more than three years ago, starting from 1st January to, to 18. And the number of cases which we uh, two institutions already considered uh, are much more than uh, I expected uh, from, um, uh, from, from the beginning. Therefore, like the first objective is just to continue as, uh, the, as the same grade as, as you are doing right now. The, se uh, the second thing, uh, and that was already mentioned by Chris, that uh, AFC court and arbitration institutions should use this unique uh, opportunity to, be, to become a hub for the settlement of uh, commercial disputes between different parts of uh, Eurasia or, different, or even different parts of the world. Because Ka Kazakhstan has this unique geographical location between uh, between biggest market players like China, Europe, uh, Russia, and uh, uh, India as well, uh, Middle East, and uh, Kazakhstan, uh, uh, Kazakhstan, uh, like supposed to be uh, uh, the center of uh, uh, of investments, of uh, movements of money and uh, goods between these uh, these different market players. Therefore, AFC uh, 
as I, as I understand, is planning to be, and uh, I'm quite sure that it will be uh, the hub for the settlement of disputes between uh, investors and companies from, uh, from different countries, not only in Central Asia region, but also from China, from, uh, from Russia, and uh, uh, all the features which AFC already has, already provides to investors, uh, will definitely support this intention. Thank you, thank you. So I think uh, we now slowly move into the jurisdiction and I guess uh, I won't spend too much time on arbitration, which is obviously common for many other kind of arbitration centers. You know, you choose it and you know, you do it. But I think AFC court jurisdiction is far more interesting because I think that's something which uh, sometimes may be underestimated by potential uh, players in Kazakhstan, including the in-house lawyers, including their external legal advisors. So I, I suggest we probably start now with Ilya and uh, move to Chris and Alexander if they wish to comment, please, on jurisdiction of the court. Um, uh, uh, Rashid, thank you so much. I, I would prefer uh, probably to give the, the floor to uh, Chris, because that's his daily bread, so to say. I, I'm happy to comment uh, on the jurisdiction uh, at the later okay, stage. Okay, okay, let's start with Chris and then come back to you, yeah? Thank Just you. Just to make sure that you comment today, yeah? All right, thank you very much, um, Rashid and Ilya. So the jurisdiction is provided very clearly in um, Article 13 of the AFC Constitutional Statute 2015, um, and also in Regulation 26 of the AFC Court Regulations. Um, 2018. And the jurisdiction, let's start with what it is not. It is not for criminal matter disputes. It is not for so-called administrative um, disputes. But let's not confuse how we define or understand administrative disputes in Kazakhstan from how we would perhaps in, uh, in, the, in, in, the, in, in England and Wales um, and other parts of the world. It does not mean that the AIC court cannot review the decisions administratively, but on a limited way of AIFC bodies, it can and it will. Um, the jurisdiction is in effect for commercial matters, so contractual matters, um, for operations involving AIFC participants or registered companies or individuals within the AIFC. And we also have opt-in jurisdiction, which uh, is where the parties to a dispute can agree in writing at any stage, pre or during dispute or post-dispute, um, to use the AFC court uh, for uh, dispute resolution. So that in a very high level is, is the jurisdiction. Um, it is being tested, I should say, ultimately, uh, as provided by the court regulations 2018, the judges themselves decide whether in every case it is appropriate and they will give jurisdiction to the parties for that particular dispute on a case by case basis. Thank you, thank you very much. Ilya, would you like to comment or probably yeah. select another yeah. question for you? Yes, thank you. Just a, a couple of thoughts. Uh, I think um, the jurisdiction of the AIFC court is not uh, very much different from what um, the world knows, knows from other examples, like the uh, similar courts in uh, Dubai, in, in Abu Dhabi, or in, in Qatar. Or clearly, there are um, some deviations or, or, or differences, but all in all, I think it is important for the um, uh, foreign communities which want to do business with Kazakhstan or in Kazakhstan to have a reliable um, dispute resolution forum uh, based on the rules of the game familiar to them. And because uh, many contracts are drafted uh, based on English law or, or are largely inspired by English law, it's, it's very uh, uh, natural to um, circumscribe the jurisdiction as it is circumscribed now in the constitutional statute and also in the regulations of the IAFC court. Thank you. Thank you, Ilya. Alexander, would you like to add anything here or we can move to next question? Next question. Okay. So I guess, uh, and I, I've looked at the number of participants today and I do understand most of them well, the majority are Kazakh lawyers or based in Kazakhstan at least, uh, but we do also have some uh, foreign delegates as well. So the question, my next question will be for, uh, for example, a Kazakh company wants to use the AIFC court or arbitration. Uh, and for example, it's not with another sort of commercial party, another Kazakh company or foreign, but with a Kazakh state entity. 
So basically Kazakh state owned enterprise. Uh, so how would you see and what sort of uh, instances it's possible and what this uh, Kazakh company, private company should do to make sure that they will end up not in a Kazakh court, but a PFC court or arbitration. So uh, I guess anyone can start and then we can sort of move around, yeah? Maybe Alexander, we can start with you if you, if you don't mind. Of course, of course, thank you, thank you, Rashid. And uh, I would say that this is one of the most popular questions that uh, I have been asked uh, during, during, my, um, during my practice uh, by, uh, by our clients. That's uh, whether uh, private companies, private investors can use uh, a, a AFC International Arbitration Center as a venue for settlement of their dispute with state-owned companies? And the answer to this question is yes. And uh, in addition to that, I would also uh, like to mention that uh, last year, the government also adopted uh, a resolution which uh, actually recommended state-owned companies uh, to use uh, a, a AFC court and arbitration and arbitration center as a venue for the settlement of their disputes with uh, local and foreign investors. Therefore, uh, state-owned companies are open to consider to consider this option, and uh, uh, most uh, even most of them uh, uh, arbitration arbitration center. And uh, in our practice, uh, when uh, our clients propose to have uh, the arbitration close with the reference to AFC arbitration center, we uh, uh, we have never uh, we, we we have never had any significant objections. From the uh, from the state party, uh, therefore uh, the, ans the answer to your question is uh, just propose that and use uh, the model arbitration clauses, uh, uh, which is listed in uh, uh, AFC International Arbitration Center website. Uh, uh, there are arbitration uh, model arbitration clauses in both languages, in uh, Russian, in English. Therefore. Uh, just uh, just follow these uh, these templates, and uh, uh, ultimately you will end up uh, in uh, international arbitration center. And uh, the biggest feature, and uh, I think the most important feature of uh, that uh, arbit uh, international arbitration center, that its award will be enforced not via uh, a local Kazakhstani court, but via uh, AFC court which is, as Chris uh, already mentioned, is fully independent from the uh, Kazakhstani ordinary court system. And uh, I think we'll come back to enforcement, uh, Alexander. Okay. Uh, now I know that if the state owned enterprise is somehow objecting to arbitration and the IFC, I would refer definitely refer to Alexander Karabinikov and say, look, you have to think about it, you have to use it. And I do know, Chris, that you obviously had discussions and MOU with Chevron and Tengi Chevron on the use of uh, model clause, arbitration clause. So I wonder whether you have anything similar with, let's say, Samru Kazina Group, Baikiria Group, and, and other sort of larger state-owned companies. Thank you, Rashid. Um, well, um, yes is the answer. Um, I understand there are some contracts. I can't quote the number for you uh, right now. Um, but there's been a profound um, campaign, if you like, not just by us, but by the government of Kazakhstan, by senior people within the AIFC authority management team and others to really encourage all companies uh, within Kazakhstan, not just within Kazakhstan, but throughout Central Asia, especially um, to include both or either the AFC court or IC in their contract dispute resolution clauses. You mentioned Schengen as Chevroil. Um, that was for a very considerable number of cases. We're grateful to our colleagues, uh, Alexander and Ilya, for recommending to their clients to put us in contracts, but, but it's not just us, it's very many people are a part of this effort. I would like to just add though, if I may, that we currently have ongoing cases involving the state of Kazakhstan. Of course, I can't say any more than that, um, but we're now at the stage where it's not just private parties, it is uh, the state being involved in dispute resolution as well, which was of course part of our long-term objective to be available for everyone on equal terms. Excellent, thank you. Once you were speaking, Chris, I started thinking about our own standard model 
legal services agreement, which with or whatever services agreement, audit or whatever we sign with our clients. And I'm not sure we use AFC uh, arbitration for now, but that's probably something to be discussed with our in-house lawyers, both in Kazakhstan and more importantly, outside of Kazakhstan. So may I, uh, may I suggest a, that they do? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Otherwise, how can we advertise it without using ourselves, right? Uh, so next question we have online. So uh, I have a list obviously of prepared questions, but now we have uh, Gordon Nardel QC and his question is, again, okay, okay, you can see it in question and answer section, but I will read it out loudly just in case someone cannot, do not have access. So has the court ever, I mean, AIC court obviously, had to consider an objection by a state owned enterprise to jurisdiction over a contract claim on the basis that the matter is administrative in nature. So in other words, I think we have a situation which Alexander described when uh, state-owned enterprise originally agreed in a contract, and then there is a dispute, and then uh, there is a, a objection uh, to, to the claim on the basis that it's a pure administrative in nature and it cannot be tried by court. So the answer is very simple. Uh, no. I wonder whether it's Chris. Chris probably will start with you, yeah? yeah. The answer is no, we have not. Okay, okay. Good, good. Uh, so I hope uh, it's a satisfying answer and uh, we move to our next question. So uh, I think we now talk a lot about ADI, alternative dispute resolution, and what is the judicial mediation and how does it work at the AIFC court? Is it compulsory, by the way? Would you like me to answer, Rashid? Uh, Chris, I think we can start with you and then move to Ilya and Alexander might add if, if he wants to, obviously. Thank you. Okay, so um, judicial med mediation was a, 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 an innovation, if you like, that we introduced to the court uh, after we had established the court. And as I said in my opening remarks, that we are continually um, launching, developing new products, if you like, new services to in, in, improve and enhance the user friendliness, if you like, of our services at both the court and IC for quick and cost-effective dispute resolution on terms we hope parties will be satisfied, at least procedurally. And the uh, judicial mediation was brought in and launched, um, I think, in sometime in 2019, in our second year of operation. Um, we launched it in, in Nassau, in Kazakhstan, with an opening launch event, as usual, at that time, pre-COVID-19. And the whole point was to offer mediation services, not just at the arbitration centre, but also at the court, as a first point of call. Point of call. It is not compulsory at all. Um, everything we do at the AFC Court and IFC, within reason, is out the platform of opportunities. It's an option, an offering for parties to decide for themselves. So if the parties wish to use judicial mediation, then they can do so. If they don't, they can go quite rightly straight to the special fast track procedure of our small claims division or straight to the other uh, first instance court or, or, or and when necessary, apply for permission, permission to appeal to the Court of Appeal in the usual way that you'd expect with an English common law system. Um, judicial mediation, uh, I think we all know what it is, but just to uh, highlight it uh, at a high level, it is, um, when a judge, a single judge, would be asked to consider uh, uh, resolving the dispute as a first pointer in the court uh, on a mediation uh, basis um, and subject to that judge giving a uh, assisting the parties with a mediation settlement, um, then the that judge would not be able to uh, be the judge on any further proceedings at the court. Um, and, um, and but it's, we have not uh, tested it yet in practice. Um, we found that it's not been a part, as far as we're aware, through our surveying and, and um, checking with the community here, it's not been a part of contracts in the dispute resolution clause. Um, but what typically is in the dispute resolution clause, and our panel members are, are better placed than me perhaps to advise on this, but um, is that there would be negotiations to start with. And then uh, if those are unsuccessful, the parties would uh, logically move on to either arbitration or proceedings at, at the court. Thank you, thank you. Uh, any comments from Alexander or Ilya? Uh, okay. I have one. I, I yes, have one please, comment, yeah. perhaps, just to uh, remind the audience of uh, what mediation is about or why did it emerge at all. I, I think uh, mediation is very demanded in the jurisdictions where the access to justice is um, relatively high. For instance, in order to litigate before um, the High Court of England and Wales, you have to 
spend uh, a lot of money on um, the lawyers and you have to wait, uh, et cetera. So that this is qu quite, a, quite a headache to uh, embark on, on a litigation before um, state courts in many countries. So mediation is a, a more uh, successful tool to settle uh, disputes unless the uh, level of um, hostility, I would say, uh, reached uh, a, a certain degree. Um, mediation is less adversarial, so you have, I think, better chances to uh, settle a dispute. And also there is a, a perception, whether it is right or wrong, that Asian countries, um, and I think Kazakhstan uh, can be regarded as an Asian and European, i.e. Eurasian country, are more inclined to uh, solve their disputes by mediation rather than to uh, you know, litigate uh, uh, for years uh, and not come to an indefinite result even within uh, a year or so. Thank you. Thank you, Ilya. I think that was very, very good additional comment. And we have a couple of questions online now. Uh, the question from John Travesy. How many, I think it's for Chris, but maybe some other speakers would want to add. So the question is, how many cases have been resolved against Republic of Kazakhstan and have those, those awards been met? Thank you for the question. Um, as I mentioned a moment ago, we have ongoing uh, um, cases involving the state of Kazakhstan. Um, we, none of those have been resolved to, uh, to final resolution yet. Um, so we're at the stage of watch this case and, and see. We'll certainly be uh, informing uh, the public uh, if it's appropriate at the time. But I would like to say that uh, I know you're coming on, I think you're coming on Rashid later to enforcement as a topic, but I can say very quickly now, we do have step-by-step um, -step procedures in place, <clears throat> separate procedures for enforcement against private assets and then again against state assets um, within the territory, the entire territory of Kazakhstan, not just within the AFC, but the entire territory of the Republic of Kazakhstan. So we do have uh, procedures in place to assist with SWIFT and cost-effective enforcement of decisions. And if you come on to it later, I'd be very happy to give uh, one or two examples of how we've done that in practice so far uh, against private assets. Excellent, excellent. I'm sure it's not about Mr. Stati and his famous matter being tried at AFC court or whatsoever. So I guess it's another very interesting case, but we have uh, another question. So if you don't mind, we'll just move to another question which we got online from Kujan Mehrabi. So I guess that's for all three speakers. Uh, would the AIFC court hear claims in tort, claims involving commercial fraud, tracing claims in trust, and apply remedies where there has been a breach of trust or a fiduciary duty? So anyone wants to, to tackle this? Claims in tort. Shall I offer? I think the answer is, uh, some of this is still yet to be tested in practice, but the answer at a high level I would say is yes, the court is open to all of these. I, I couldn't hear all of the uh, areas of law that you were listing. I think there was some problem with the, the sound, uh, maybe at my end, but um, I heard taught commercial fraud um, and fiduciary duties and trusts. So yes, in principle, the court is open for, to consider such disputes um, and we welcome uh, applications uh, in those areas. Excellent, thank you, thank you. Uh, so I wonder whether Alexander, Ilya, you had any uh, discussions with your clients on that, or probably not yet. Yeah, I mean, in terms of, in terms of claims in tort. No. Not yes. Yet. Well, I, I think uh, I didn't have any such discussion. But the good thing about the AIFC court, as any court uh, um, applying uh, um, common law, is that you can combine in, in your lawsuit both claims. So there is no such doctrine as as we know from the Russian procedural law or I guess also from the Kazakhstani procedural law competition of claims so ie if you have a contract you only have to base your claim on on the non-performance or improper performance of the contract rather than on tort so from the English law standpoint is it it works perfectly that you might have both claims either as an alternative or concurrently so that's why the AIFC court I think is best suited to hear that type of claims as well. Okay, okay, Ilya, thank you, thank you. I guess next question is again to Chris, and obviously Chris knows the answer definitely, but maybe we can try uh, other speakers as well. So the question is from Jandos Uspanov, 
where can I see the practice specific cases that you have considered? So I guess we talk about uh, AFC court rather than arbitration because obviously arbitration was uh, confidential. Uh, so I guess we talk about AFC court. So Alexander, maybe we can move to you and Chris will just confirm where it can be found or. Yes, yes, thank you. And uh, that's also one of the of, uh, of most popular questions from, from our clients, whether we can see the practice. And uh, the answer is uh, just go to the website of uh, AFC Court. Uh, I would say that uh, AFC, AFC in whole and AFC judi judicial institutions uh, did make great job in uh, uh, dig digitalization of uh, its activity and uh, uh, the relevant website is very informative. Therefore, you can find uh, court decisions, court orders, and all other information about AFC court in its website. Please just okay. Thank you. Confirmed, Thank you but I'd like much. to add, if I may, um, yeah, that's absolutely right. And um, the website is being redesigned and will be launched at some point during the course of this year. So it's, I hope it's even more user-friendly uh, going forwards. But um, the, with that, in terms of arbitration, we haven't yet published any arbitration awards. Of course, uh, the expectation is uh, that, that those will be confidential and will not be um, published. However, uh, if the parties agree, and all of them agree, and would ask them to do so, of course, in writing, to publishing some form, if not all of the arbitration award, then we are we are able to do that under the terms of our arbitration regulations. So uh, we will be discussing in due course when we believe it's appropriate uh, with parties and arbitrators in those disputes as to whether they will be consenting to allow us to give some indication, not a library of the A to Z of every single arbitration case, that's just not going to be possible. Of course, I'm sure we'll appreciate that. Um, but it would be it would be a good idea, uh, I think, to be able to showcase at least one or two so that people, especially people who have not used our facilities before, especially from Kazakhstan and the Central Asia market, can see how it works in practice. Because so far, I can tell you, without revealing any confidentialities, that the arbitration awards that have been drafted so far, which, by the way, are all checked by our chairman, Barbara Doman QC, before they're published, have been absolutely first class, the top international standard. And they have been very thorough in explaining precisely all of the procedural steps that have been taken and one or two issues that might have come up with the parties in the usual course of arbitration proceedings. So we are working on that. And so again, please uh, watch this case and uh, expect to see some indication of that uh, in our promotional materials and our website uh, soon. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. We have another uh, couple of other questions. Uh, I know this one is tricky, although the answer is very simple. Uh, again, from Jean Dosos-Banov, can I file a complaint with the tax authorities? So I know it's one of the favorite Chris questions and he loves to answer it, but I, I know that the answer is very short. So would you like me to answer it? Please. <laughs> We've discussed it already. That's why I'm, that's why yeah. I'm joking about it. So the, the court does not um, currently consider um, uh, Kazakhstan tax code disputes and the appropriate place for that, which has already been decided by our chief justice and judges is the local courts of Kazakhstan. Um, however, um, we are exploring p possibilities and potential for our arbitration center to be somehow involved in that uh, process. So if, if you are, or investors are looking for an alternative to the existing infrastructure, uh, I would say that at this stage, they should expect some movement on that in the future. Excellent, thank you, thank you. So not much work for tax lawyers, I'm afraid. Not bad, good. Not a good news for big four, but okay, let's move on. Uh, I think we have- I'm sorry, Rashid, let me, let me probably add something to, uh, to answer to that question. And uh, I would say that uh, it doesn't mean that AFC court is useless for uh, tax lawyers at all, because uh, uh, as of today in Kazakhstan, probably uh, many of our uh, participants know that we have uh, so-called investment agreements with, uh, with the state or, uh, or state authorities, which provides for some, um, which may provide for some tax benefits. And, in the, and if parties agree in that agreement, that all disputes arising out from these agreements will be settled in AFC court, uh, and uh, the relevant dispute can, uh, relates to application of the relevant tax benefits, I believe that that's something that may fall under the jurisdiction of uh, AFC court, 
as a contractual dispute arising out from the uh, invest investment agreement between between the state and uh, the relevant investor. Therefore, that that's 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 no uh, that's not like uh, absolutely useful uh, useful uh, useless for uh, tax for tax lawyers. Alexander, but talking about these investment contracts, which is obviously very which are very close to my heart. Have you seen uh, as a dispute resolution clause AIFC court or AFC arbitration? Because usually, I guess you will, well, 100%, you will sign this investment contract with state authorities and state authorities are very, very reluctant to do uh, and have any kind of deviation from their standard uh, Kazakh sort of uh, uh, courts uh, decisions, etc. So. Have you have you seen any examples of these investment contracts? I mean, recent investment contracts, obviously, on uh, yeah. using the IFC court. Yeah, the answer, the answer is yes. In our practice, we already have uh, several uh, invest investment agreements, uh, including PPP agreements with uh, with state authorities, which refer to uh, AFC court or AFC International Arbitration Center. And right now, one of our clients, one of the biggest uh, investors in Kazakhstan uh, are, uh, is in discussion with uh, state authorities to put AFC uh, dispute resolution clause into the invest investment contract. And uh, they, uh, this, the, sta the state authorities is disputing all other provisions, but not this one. <laughs> Therefore, we, we are quite- Excellent. So I guess you asked for 20, very, very important things, and one of them was an AIC court. So they said, "Okay, let's go for AIC court." Then. <laughs> Reject all nineteen others. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a number of other questions. Uh, we have a question online question from Michael uh, Clayton Jolly. So his question, I guess, it's more for Chris, but I'm sure it's relevant to both Alexander and Ilya. Is registration for AIC rights of audience equally opened? to English qualified barristers and solicitors? The answer is yes, it's absolutely open. When we set up the rights of audience scheme system, it was under the uh, leadership of Lord Wolf, our first Chief Justice. And as I'm sure all of the participants today, especially from the UK would expect, there was absolute attention to detail on access to justice. So the procedure is very simple. The details are on the AFC Court website. Um, and we have registered already a significant number of barristers and solicitors um, for rights of audience at the AFC court. We've also registered a considerable number of Kazakh lawyers who don't have the same regulatory um, body control, if you like, or monitoring as you would get with regulatory bar boards elsewhere in the world. So we set up a separate system for them to enable them to have access as well. And we provide supplementary training uh, where necessary to support uh, the, the, those Kazakh lawyers too. Good, good. Excellent, Grace. I think we. I have a next question, which is directly relevant to what uh, has been discussed about rights of audience. And I guess if you don't mind, I will start with Ilya. So the question is, can a party that has no connection to Kazakhstan bring a claim to the AIC court or uh, arbitration center? And if so, why should they? So my question is direct question to Ilya, because obviously he's based in Moscow, in Russia. And uh, I wonder how and, and, and in what kind of situations he would recommend the use of AFC court or AFC arbitration to his clients in Russia. Yes, um, thank you, Rashid. Um, indeed, it makes sense to select a dispute resolution clause which is suitable for the enforcement in the country where the assets are based, um, on which execution should or may be David, so for the selection of an appropriate arbitration clause or dispute resolution clause, other decisive factors may be reclaim a state court at the seat of arbitration, set aside the arbitral award if you opt for arbitration, or how likely will the arbitral award be recognized or and enforced in the country where it was rendered and also in other countries. And thus, if a party um, has no connection whatsoever to Kazakhstan, also in, in, in the strange or odd to bring the claim to the AIFC court, but it may be wise to bring a claim to the IAC, to the arbitration. 
cooperation. A supplier from Azerbaijan or a purchaser from Kyrgyzstan entered into a sale and purchase agreement governed by the UN Vienna Convention on the International Sale of Goods and used an arbitration clause in favor of the IAC or a prorogation clause in favor of the IAFC court. In the first case, arbitral award rendered by the IAC may be easily recognized and enforced if the debtor has property in the relevant country or of the world, or uh, it may be also enforced uh, both in Kazakhstan in accordance with the enforcement procedure on which uh, Chris may speak uh, at a later stage, or outside on the basis of the New York Convention. Um, as to the judgment of the AIFC court, again, there are two routes or two avenues for enforcement in Kazakhstan and outside. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Alexander, Chris, would you like to add anything or we have a number of other questions and we have only eight minutes left. David, we have eight minutes, right? Okay, so uh, my next question is about uh, digital digitalization and Chris already mentioned it briefly. So when the COVID sort of and quarantine and other sort of unpleasant things started all over the world, including Kazakhstan, March last year, I think AIFC generally and AFC court and arbitration were well prepared. So you already mentioned the facilities and online hearings, etc. So the question is whether obviously, yeah, well, you couldn't expect it that it would happen, but I think so. A from what I, we understand from the film and your presentation, uh, AFC court and arbitration were ready. Second, uh, there was no need for any further regulation or uh, additional legislation. I did some countries where it wasn't sort of 100% prepared and uh, online hearings were unheard of, if I can use that word, uh, for before, before this COVID situation. So Chris, I wonder how, how you handle it. Uh, I mean, not technically, but in terms of additional legislation, was it required or not? Please. Thank you, Rashid. Um, I know you have a number of questions in a limited amount of time left, so I'll be very quick, um, if I may. Uh, firstly, were we ready? Yes, absolutely, we were. Uh, we had already launched our e-justice system, and we had video technology already uh, partly in use, but not relied upon as much as, obviously, as it has been since the outbreak of COVID-19. Um, as a business, we moved to remote working uh, immediately, with only one or two critical staff on operational matters in the phys in physically in our premises. Um, I'm working from home right now. I'm not in the office, contrary to the corridor you can see in my background. Um, um, and that has been the case. Health and safety of staff and users has been of paramount importance. So the answer was we were absolutely ready. There was no disruption to our business whatsoever. Uh, the case numbers significantly increased, not because of COVID. They're not COVID related, most of our cases, just because that was the, the trend, the transgression, we were, we were, the path we were on for the development course in IEC. Uh, we didn't have to change our rules. Uh, when we create, we had the benefit of being a new court and arbitration centre. So we obviously didn't anticipate, I think anyone did COVID-19, how could they? But um, we had, we did anticipate being able to provide services 100% online, given that we're in Kazakhstan, given that we're expecting to be a part of the attraction of international investment to the AFC Kazakhstan and the Central Asia region. And we didn't expect everyone to be able to come here at such short notice, as you all know, as lawyers, is sometimes required uh, in the proceedings of cases. So our rules did not need to be changed at all. Um, so we have been no disruption, fully operational from the very beginning of the outbreak of COVID-19. And we will continue even after COVID-19 to continue uh, the use of our online services, but we will use the physical premises when it's necessary on a case by case basis. Excellent, excellent. And uh, my quick question, Ilya and Alexander, obviously you both had experience uh, litigating and I guess arbitrating uh, at AIFC, so I wonder whether you've had a chance to use online hearings as well, and what's your uh, what's your what's your view, and how was how was it? Tell us, Alexander. Would you like to start? Yeah, with pleasure. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a comment that I would like to make uh, to uh, uh, Chris. Uh, Key summary of uh, online uh, rules uh, uh, in a, uh, of AFC. Last year, I um, I had a pleasure to uh, handle one of cases as a sole arbitrator, and uh, I did that uh, uh, only online. And uh, I would personally confirm that uh, 
uh, there is no any difficulties with uh, handling uh, arbitration arbitration case. Uh, it was, I, I would say, quite completed uh, with uh, uh, both parties disputed uh, di different uh, different issues. Uh, but we we managed to handle that online with uh, with no difficulties at all. Therefore, I can confirm based on my own experience that everything is worked perfectly. Excellent. Thank you, Ilya. S same from my side, although I didn't have the honor uh, and pleasure to be appointed as an arbitrator uh, for, for the, in these proceedings yet, um, I attended a couple of meetings where a much larger number of participants from all over the world participated and everything went smoothly and without any technical errors on the AIFC courts side. Um, and so the, the cooperation with uh, the participants to this event went uh, seamless, uh, unless, as I said, there were some troubles on their side. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Rashid, uh, if I may offer a very quick flavor of-, of Please, of please, but we have well. three minutes only. Very, very quick. Just to well, say, um, I can think of several mediation cases we've helped um, parties to resolve through mediation, and those disputes have been resolved with parties sitting in their cars in car parks uh, during the first wave, especially, and you could see them um, sitting in the driver's seat um, and still presenting their positions uh, satisfactorily and coming to some form of, of settlement agreement via video, via their mobile phones. So um, there, were, there were no distractions for us. So now you know what sort of cars every every lawyer using AIC driving, yeah? Okay. yeah they, they weren't important <laughs> assets in the dispute. <laughs> Okay, so I think we come naturally, and it was touched upon twice during uh, discussion today, enforcement. So how does enforcement of AIFC court decisions happen? So I think, Chris, we can start with you and then move to Alexander and Ilya, if you don't mind. Thank you, Rashid. Um, again, in the interest of time, I'll attempt to be very quick. Um, so um, what happens is we've had successful enforcement. Enforcement so far, 100% successful enforcement on all judgments that have needed to be enforced through our mechanism. Uh, we're ha I'm happy to say that um, some parties have enforced voluntarily, and they've just paid up under the, the sum due and the judgment or order of the court. Um, but so far, the way it works is we have a step-by-step -step procedure. It was signed by our first Chief Justice, Lord Wolfe, with the uh, centre here that's responsible for enforcement, the enforcement agents of for private enforcement, and also by the Minister of Justice, Minister Bekateyev. Um, the Ministry of Justice in Kazakhstan with the Ministry of Justice for Enforcement Against State Assets. We haven't tested the State Assets Enforcement yet, as I mentioned earlier, but we have successfully enforced several times uh, on court judgments and orders in the entire territory of Kazakhstan, not just in the Sultan or Almaty, but throughout the uh, main regions of Kazakhstan. Um, arbitration awards at the IAC are enforceable throughout the entire territory of Kazakhstan as orders of the AFT court. Very quickly, I can tell you, Justice Sir Robin Jacob has been responsible, has done the um, enforcement of recognition, if you like, and enforcement of those judge uh, arbitration awards, interim and final arbitration awards so far. And I can tell you that, um, uh, that he as the judge has, has received electronically the application for recognition and enforcement, and within 60 to 90 minutes, he has given his recognition uh, order and a judgment. So it's been enormously quick. And then what I do is immediately instruct my case management team to get on the phone or meet in person if it's appropriate with the enforcement agents, th either through the Ministry of Justice or so far through the private bailiffs centre. And uh, we are in contact day and night until the order of the court and judgment of the court is 100% enforced. So far it has been. That's involved freezing bank accounts, seizing assets and the like. So it's been enormously quick. We don't charge the parties, it's free of charge. I should have said that from the outset for all proceedings at the court and IAC until uh, 1st of January next year. And the charges then will only be very, very uh, low anyway, certainly cheaper than other international arbitration centers and common law courts. Thank you, Chris. I think that was excellent timing. Uh, I don't think we have any time left. Uh, I think next time we should plan probably for a bit longer, longer session, but I would like to thank our three speakers today. And uh, uh, I'm sure if there are any further questions from the audience, uh, you can uh, direct your questions direct uh, to Chris, Alexander and Ilya uh, via British Catholic Society or directly. And I think David, you obviously wanted to add something. Uh, Rashid, thank you very much. Uh, I would also like to thank everybody for their, uh, for their participation.
um, obviously uh, Rashid, Chris, and the uh, and the panel for their I'd say very informative uh, um, comments. Obviously, from the questions that you've received, the the uh, the legal community, uh, particularly in Kazakhstan, is very interested in these uh, in these subjects. But also for I think uh, non lawyers, it, it's been extremely extremely um, informative. So uh, th thanks for that, and obviously the um, support from the AIFC uh, court and, and the uh, um, and the uh, uh, arbitration uh, centre. So that's uh, that support is really appreciated. Also, I'd like to thank the people we uh, we don't easily see uh, here, Alijan from the uh, the BKS for uh, management of, of a lot of the uh, the webinar. Uh, together with uh, ASL, Muet in the uh, AIFC support team, plus not, not to uh, uh, forget Igorim, Natalia, and Dinara on the uh, interpretation. So um, uh, finally, I'd just like to mention a couple of the uh, BKS events which are um, uh, on our agenda. Uh, May the 19th, we have uh, agribusiness webinar with a focus on uh, cereals, and we have Ross uh, Murray as a uh, um, moderator. Uh, June the 8th, a uh, very interesting uh, oil, gas, and renewables uh, um, webinar, which is focused on decarbonization in Kazakhstan, a very uh, critical and important uh, topic. And Aida Sidikova from the EBRD will uh, will uh, manage that uh, um, that panel so and in addition there will be ongoing uh, um, events uh, related to the 30 years of Kazakhstan's independence so with that I encourage you to view our uh, website and look forward to seeing you all at the next uh, um, event and uh, trust you will be joining the BKS if you have not already done so so with that keep safe See you next time. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Bye, Thank bye. You. Bye bye.